roughly 15 billion miles. This is the gigantic distance in space that now gapes between us and the farthest man-made object ever, the Voyager space probes. Only one other unmanned spacecraft, which was Pioneer 10, has ever made it thus far into space. The probes, which were launched in the late 1970s, continue to regularly deliver important new information to scientific experts. But how come the Voyager mission, which began more than 45 years ago, is still active? What information was provided by the probe's mission? What about the puzzling plasma movements that Voyager 2 discovered a few years ago in interstellar space? Finally, and most importantly, where are Voyager probes right now? Today, we'll take a deeper look at one of space travel's biggest success stories with you. The year is 1977, when NASA's Voyager probes set off into the gigantic expanses of space. As is generally known, the two unmanned spacecraft are still in space, 45 years after their launch, making close touch with the solar system's outermost regions. However, a glance at the large-scale research mission's original objectives reveals that no one in the 1970s could have foreseen that the Voyager program would end up being the longest-running space mission ever. Our understanding of the far reaches of our solar system was still extremely limited when the two spacecraft departed from Earth. Therefore, the mission's intended wide objectives included investigating the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn, examining the Moon's geology, investigating various magnetic fields, and learning more about the makeup and dispersion of particles and plasma. And first, everything went according to plan. When Voyager 1 arrived at Jupiter, Saturn, and their natural satellites, it conducted extensive observations and sent many images back to our blue planet. The information gathered at that time brought our understanding of the iconic ringed planet and the mighty Jupiter to a whole new level. Not only did it discover several previously undiscovered moons of Saturn, but it also demonstrated that the planet's ring system is a complicated structure made up of thousands of independent orbits, rather than being a homogeneous ring. The project also revealed to scientists that Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system, has a ring system of its own. But in addition to their innumerable discoveries, the Voyager probes also managed to capture some stunning images. Although they have no notable scientific applications, they continue to enjoy cult status. Among them is what is known as the family portrait of our solar system. The photo mosaic depicts the solar system's six planets in color. Jupiter, Earth, Venus, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Also making news was the picture that came to be known as the pale blue dot. With a distance of 4 billion miles, it is still the furthest photograph ever taken of our blue home planet. After seeing Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 1 continued on its journey toward interstellar space. Voyager 2's exploration path held several other stops already. By the time the probe arrived at Uranus in 1985, it had already spent eight years in space. At the time, this was more than twice as long as it had been expected to last. Also in this passage were several interesting finds. In the course of the exploration, eight additional Uranus moons were found. Four years later, Voyager 2 passed Neptune on August 26, 1989, at a distance of around 3,000 miles. Meanwhile, more than 9,000 pictures of the ice giant's blue shimmering surface were captured and sent to Earth. 
Additionally, Voyager 2 made the first discovery of the celestial body's rings. Nine previously undiscovered Neptune satellites were added to the star charts, but scientific attention shifted to the already known Triton. Voyager 2 demonstrated that the moon's real diameter was closer to 1,500 miles than the prior estimate of up to 3,000 miles. Additionally, the satellite's surface lacked most craters and instead had a rippling appearance. Volcanic activity was the cause of the celestial body's distinctive brown and white coloring. Geysers launch enormous volumes of liquid nitrogen into the air, where it partially freezes and returns to the surface as a white nitrogen snow. It was also time for Voyager 2 to join its sister probe into the furthest regions of the solar system and beyond, following the successful Neptune crossing. This interstellar mission's overarching objective entails an in-depth investigation of the solar system's furthest reaches as well as the surrounding interstellar space. Experts refer to interstellar space as the far-from-star region of space within a galaxy. The interstellar medium is the matter, radiation, and magnetic fields created by its dynamics in interstellar space. Its most essential constituents are dust, and above all, gases in ionized atomic and molecular form. Voyager 1 came close to the helio envelope in 2002. The heliosphere is the vast area surrounding the sun where the solar wind and its magnetic fields are active. The solar particle stream interacts with interstellar materials in the heliosphere, slowing down the flow of solar wind particles. Researchers learned that Voyager 1 had reached the helio envelope boundary zone in December 2004, when they noticed a sharp slowdown of the solar wind and a dramatic change in the direction of the magnetic field. The magnetometer readings from the spacecraft also revealed the existence of a strong magnetic field outside the solar system. In 2010, there were more and more indications that Voyager 1 was approaching the Heliopause. In 2012, the time had come. The probe had transmitted that the anomalous cosmic rays dropped sharply. As Voyager 1 departed the heliosphere and subsequently arrived at the Heliopause, galactic cosmic rays began to rise rapidly. Voyager 1 is approximately 23 billion kilometers away from Earth as of today. Finally, Voyager 2 entered interstellar space on November 5, 2018. It is presently 19 billion kilometers away from the Sun. The first of the two space probes, Voyager 1, had a scientific setback as it made its way out of our solar system and into interstellar space. Its plasma measurement device was no longer functional at that point. Fortunately, the identical Voyager 2's equivalent payload was still in good working order. Currently, scientists predict that radio contact with the two spacecraft will end around the year 2036 and then never to be heard from ever again. However, this does not mean that the spacecraft's trip is over. In around 40,000 years, assuming nothing unexpected happens, Voyager 1 will pass the star Gliese 445. In the far future, 225 million years from today, the probe will have traveled a distance equivalent to circling the Milky Way. However, a thorough analysis of the gathered data revealed a brand new cosmic enigma for scientists. The analyses indicate the existence of an additional layer between the heliosphere of the Sun and interstellar space. The transition from the solar system to interstellar space may not be cleanly cut off, but instead may have a step-like structure. Researchers then discovered another much thicker layer of interstellar plasma flowing into the heliosphere outside this newly detected zone. The plasma density either rises 20-fold as a result of these unexpected movements over a vast area covering billions of miles. All of these facts suggest that the plasma is actually compressed by something in the corresponding location. The trouble is that scientists have no idea what it could be. 
Further study missions are required to learn more about this fascinating discovery and the structure of the solar system's periphery. For example, experts intend to send more spacecraft to the solar system's outermost regions in the future in order to further examine its boundaries. By the way, what are your thoughts about this? What are your thoughts on the Voyager Space Probe's 45-year interstellar journey? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Consider subscribing to the channel if you like the video. And as always, thanks for watching.